Hi guys, this is Matty. I'm Adam. Uh, we're from Versus Urses. We've been asked some questions by Carol, who works at Idiotech, um, about the bands, like interview questions. So the first question is, how has the Versus Urses business developed since we last spoke last year? Thanks, Adam. Um, yeah, it's been pretty good. Uh, you know, we've been on a couple of tours. We've released an album, finally. That was quite good. Mm. Only took a year to make it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's about it. I mean, how are you feeling about business at the moment? Yeah, not bad. We've got a tour booked uh, for next week. We've been on a number of tours in the last year. Um, we've been writing a lot of new material and that kind of stuff. So I feel like we're progressing business-wise. I feel like business. we're progressing. Lots of international business. Well, not international. National business. <laughs> Right, okay. So, we've shot some new band pictures. Uh, yes, we did. We got our friend Roberta to take, take some uh, nice photos of us. Mm -hmm. How did you find that experience, Adam? Yeah, that was lovely. She took us down to uh, Waterloo Meadows, which is in Reading. Um, we had some pictures taken in the play area, because we're cool. Uh, and also in just in the general meadow area. Um, we didn't send Carol the ones from the play area, though. Did we not? No. You might have seen them on some promo shots, though. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, possibly. That's possible. Um, but yeah, they they were really nice actually, and I found that worked particularly well because a lot of our songs are kind of about nature and about the conflict of man and uh, nature and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it kind of felt appropriate as we were out in nature. Yeah, they were very natural. Mm. Uh, some of them were slightly unnatural. Mm. We wore some glasses, but yeah. <laughs> Some funny glasses, right? Enough about that, right? Your my turn. My turn. Okay, so how's the album been doing? Has our new heavy musical persona enabled us to gain more fans uh, or musical opportunities? Well, um, probably not. <laughs> In short, like, I don't know. It's difficult because. You know, when you play hard, aggressive music, people aren't always that into it. And sometimes it's hard to kind of get it, your foot in the door at gigs and stuff like that. But I kind of feel like we're making a bit of headway in mm. going to new places and doing things. Like, we're getting, you know, further afield. We've been to Liverpool and stuff this year and, you know, Sheffield, where else? Leicester. Mm. You know, we're getting around a bit. I don't know whether that's directly attributable to our new heavy persona. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was always kind of a heavy persona, to be honest with you. But, um, yeah. I think we've got a bit heavier in the last kind of year or so. Um, if you pass me the sheet, I've actually written some notes on there. Okay. I think, uh, personally for me, I think we have gained um, some new opportunities. For instance, we've met uh, the twin Dracula, who happened to practice at the same time as us in the same studios. Uh, and we seem to play the same gigs and we even had the same release date for our albums. Um, and we seem it to, wasn't planned. No, we seem planned. we seem to play with Jack Bryant quite a lot um, in his several bands. So I think that that's enabled us to gain a, a few more friends in that kind of area. We made some friends. Naked Saints, for instance. Um, Naked. We've got well, they're a very sexy band from uh, Latvia. Um, we're getting them down in in next week, isn't it? Yeah. Latvia, is it Latvia? I think they're from Latvia or okay. well, Lithuania. Um, it was one of the Baltic states, anyway. So. Um, I think it has enabled us. And then Rock Bitch, for instance. Yeah. I think they've taken to us as well. We like Rock Bitch. Uh, it's a promotional company from uh, Basingstoke. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So they're pretty good. Right. When did we begin writing material for this new outing? Um, what, for the album we just released? That's right. Well, I think we started writing material for it before I joined the band about last April, the end of last April, beginning of May kind of time um, of 2013. Uh, and you guys had already sent me demos for the majority of the album. So I think you had actually recorded some of the tracks with the old drummer. Yeah. Um, so I think you'd actually started writing it probably the summer of 2012. Yeah, it's been around for like a long time. It yeah. took a long time. Yeah. It's well, finally we, done though, which yeah. is good. Well, we decided that we were going to do it off our own back, um, not get a studio involved and in that kind of thing. So it's taken a little bit longer than it would have done if we had got somebody professional to do it. However, we had pretty much no no production cost, did we? Other than the CDs? Well, exactly, yeah. And my sanity. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, no, I'm really glad we did it the way we did it because... 
I don't know, it just sounds how we want it to sound. And like we've tried to record with people before and it just never works. So. Mm. But I think the other thing is uh, to do with the writing. We, after I joined the band, we're still in the process of writing. There's, for instance, a couple of songs that we finished. Um, Sa- uh, Snowstorm and Witch Hunt in particular stand out for me. And we wrote after I joined. So we, we were still kind of writing up until the point when we recorded pretty much, weren't we? Yeah, definitely. So I think that sort of slightly overlaps with this next question. Oh, was that? Hang on. Yeah, it does completely overlap with the next question. All right, the next question's mine, anyway. Uh, how would you compare this recent recording process with the early days of the band and the first recording sessions? Well, I wasn't there for the early days of the band, so you're going to have to talk about the old recording sessions. Okay, well, yeah, um, I don't know. I suppose Adam is, like, a big difference because he wasn't there. Um, <laughs> so that's how, like, the newer stuff is different because Adam's there playing drums. But, um, for instance, we recorded the drums in the, the studio this time. You recorded old old versions in James's living room? Yeah, room. well, we're talking, like, a long time ago, like 2010 or whatever. Mm. I've recorded drums in someone's living room. But, yeah, you know, doing it in the studio is better. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you used to get vocal takes from the bathroom occasionally as well? Yeah, it's weird, weird stuff like that. We stopped doing that. <laughs> we started going to a studio it's pretty good so yeah we, we do it all in the studio just off our own backs we take everything down so um, I'd say that would be the major major difference yeah and I'm better at recording things so <laughs> that also helps next question is yours number six okay which of the tracks on the record is most different from your original concept for a song what song would you say is most different Adam I'd probably say Witch Hunt. Um, obviously, I'm I'm going to have a limited viewpoint on this because I only had input in a couple of the songs um, from from the beginning of recording. Uh, but I'd say Witch Hunt in particular because I think Graham wanted it to be quite groovy, a bit slower, kind of um, a bit funkier maybe. Uh, and he was Funk. he was trying to explain that. He wanted the drums like a sped up hip hop kind of beat. Uh, so I played drum and bass basically over the top of it, slowed down version of. Um, that's 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 not a sped up hip hop beat, is it? It is. It is in a way. It is. It's okay. It is. Um, so I think that changed the dynamic of the song, and then we Graham wanted some kind of thrashier bits in there, but because it sped up, it just had a bit more balls to it, and that kind of stuff. So I think that one for me, would be the song. And plus, Graham said it wouldn't sound anything like it if I hadn't done, done what I did to the drums. Yeah, yeah. No, I think, like, it turned out really weird because, like, um, well, not weird. I mean, like, weird in a good way. Because, uh, like, I don't know. It kind of goes from, like, I don't know, drum and bass with horrible noises into, like, a thrash bit into, like, almost, like, I don't know what to describe it as. A- more, more rock, rocky, developy, choral bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a bit all over the place, but yeah, it <laughs> doesn't sound anything like. Because when Graham first played it to us, it basically sounded like Slipknot. So, <laughs> and then we decided not to play it in drop B, uh, and yeah, then it didn't sound like Slipknot. <laughs> so there we go. Are there already plans for another record next year? Yes. Uh, well, not like a whole full length, but we're already about five songs. I know we've only just released this one, but it's been done for a long time. Um, we're about five songs into the next whatever it is going to be, so we're probably going to record that relatively soon. Mm. But I imagine it'll end up taking, you know, for no, it won't take forever. We're really quick. So. <laughs> I hope it doesn't take forever. Uh, so you know, I think maybe sometime early next year we'll have another another EP. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. Another five tracks, at least. At most. Yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> it might take a while. We're at number eight. Well, I mean, like, the first time I spoke to these guys, like, um, I was, like, under the idea that the album would come out, like, before Christmas of 2013. Right, yeah. Uh, which I don't know where on earth I got that idea from, <laughs> because it actually came out in August of this year. You forgot that you had a day job. Oh yeah, sorry, I've got a day job and I have to do stuff sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, um, that happened. So us saying that we have five songs now basically means that by the end of next year you might have an album 
or a double album. I don't know. I don't really know what it means. <laughs> we'll play it by ear. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, we're definitely a prolific band. I don't know if we're prolific at recording. Uh, right, so this is my question. <laughs> um, well, we record prolifically. It just takes a while. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop talking about that. <laughs> um, it's a sore point. Uh, right, so this is, this is getting deep. Um, I'm going to read this word for word because it's quite a long question. From what I can see, you're still defending the payable model of music distribution. Does that mean that your previous records earned you hundreds of thousands of dollars? <laughs> uh, I, yeah. Uh, do you think that the current sources of free music are eventually going to pay off for artists? In a word, no. <laughs> Our last records did not make us hundreds of millions of dollars. And also, um, I don't think the, the the other bit. No, on that as well. Yeah. Like Spotify, we're never going to get. Well, unless like you I play it whilst you sleep. I think. I think. Well, I think the thing about Spotify is that they say they charge roughly about the same. They say they charge rough, roughly about the same that the radios uh, pay to to play a track anyway. So. Uh, from that point of view, you're getting plenty of other tracks played, yeah. which wouldn't have been played on the limited amount of radio stations. Yeah. So from that point of view, artists will get money where they would not have done previously. I think with things like um, iTunes, uh, Bandcamp, and some of the other things like that, I think, again, it opens up the market to, to lots of new people. Um, I was reading something on, you know, on Facebook when you get this 20 things that the is embarrassing to find out about the music industry. Yeah. And it was yeah. things like Rihanna sold, sold more records than yeah. Michael Jackson and stuff like that. Well, there's a reason for that because there's a plenty more people around these days and B the market has opened up. So plenty more people have access to buy that music. Yeah. So I think if, if you're a popular, uh, and B probably backed by one of the major record labels, then it probably will enable you to earn more money. But I think as somebody who is small, you're going to have to fight more because there'll be plenty more people selling their selling their records online. So I think ultimately it gives people more opportunities than they would have had recent um before recent times. It's it's kind of a double edged sword really <laughs> yeah. because you know it's you know you can pay whatever like 30 quid and then your album is on you know they distribute it for you. Mm. It's on iTunes and Spotify and everything. So everyone in the world has an opportunity to listen to it. Mm. But then because you can do that it means everyone else can do it. Mm. So it's not just you doing that. There's infinitely more music out there for people to listen to. Yeah. Which is, you know... Makes it harder to find what you want to find. Really, yeah, I suppose I so, yeah. I yeah, think I mean, at the end of the day, though, like, I... Whilst I maybe don't understand the payable model of artistic distribution, I, d I don't know. We spent a lot of time on it. And, you know, they say time is money. So mm. I, I think I wouldn't just give it away for free. You know, but I suppose that if you have people who come to your shows and buy your merch and whatever, that's fine. You make your money in a different way, but, mm. uh, you know, spent a lot of time on it. You know, I don't think it's bad to charge people for it. No, no, definitely not. And I think also, um, you just have to be careful when you're using some of these websites as well, because they, uh, some of them will say, basically, if you put your music on our website, then we own your music yeah. from, from this point forth. Yeah. Uh, and you do not own any of it anymore so I think some artists need to be very careful on the kind of websites they're putting putting things up for but the musicians union is definitely the way to go for that one I reckon PRS that's uh, not yeah. a musicians union that's a license fee collection agency but also PRS is yeah thing. so those two are good um, okay so number nine um, there are some single shows planned for the coming weeks uh are we tempted to hit the road big time and arrange a massive European trek? Yes. I'd love that. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. I would like that very much. Well, we've got a tour coming up next week, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and we have, we're just in the process of discussing transport, uh, which is, we've decided a camper van, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty much. It's a massive one. But... If all goes well around the UK with a camper van, then there's no reason to say, for instance, if we all booked a week off, that we wouldn't be able to go further afield to France or Holland or... Or Poland. Yeah, Poland. F Which is... Definitely. Yeah. Well, there's lots of Polish people in England, and if we can pick up a little bit of Polish before we go, then hopefully we can uh, get around a little bit easier as I well. I think it'd be good. Um, but yeah, so I think Europe would definitely be cool. 
something that you hear from a lot of the American, big American bands is that Europe has the best uh, crowds in the world anyway, because Europe's pretty mental. So I definitely, for one, would like to experience some of these mental European that, that crowds. That could be something uh, for next year, I think. I mm. think we've already like we've done a couple of tours in the UK this year. Mm. Next year, I'd love to go to Europe. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, question ten. All right. So, question ten. Just, I'm just. Oh yeah. So we've got. Drink little... your beer. What, mate? <laughs> Get yourself comfortable, Matty. Oh, uh, okay. Question 10. How do you remember your tour last October? Uh, tour last October was an interesting one. We'd never really been out of the home counties before. Uh, so it was quite a long drive to Birmingham. Um, we played quite an interesting gig at the Roadhouse in Birmingham. Uh, <clears throat> and then a lot of the other places from there really wasn't that difficult to get to other than Red Hill which was uh, like five hours worth of traffic jam. Um, we had some good shows. I think we improved as we as the tour went on. Um, well, that's the thing. You kind of always start off and it's a bit like... Mm. Mm. And then by the end of it, you're a finely tuned machine. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Unless, so, unless someone breaks your toe. Yeah. Uh, but even still, I don't think that really hindered us a great deal. No. At the time. No. Definitely it did not. afterwards. <laughs> definitely not. Um, but yeah, so I think the tour last October went well. It was awesome. Yeah, we need to It was our it. first like proper tour. Yeah. It was good. Um and I think that's put us in good stead for the, the two tours that we have had since and the one tour that we've got next week. I feel ready. I feel yeah. ready. I'm excited. Uh I got a question for Matty, uh that wasn't on the sheet, which was have we encountered any problems on tour? Uh so far. What problems have we encountered on tour so far? Um exploding PAs. Um <laughs> John being in the toilet when we're supposed to be playing. <laughs> yeah. um, don't know if I should really say that. Uh, what else? What else has happened? I forgot about the, the PA that actually set on fire. Was it one set on fire? Oh yeah, oh right. This in one face talk. bar, yeah. Don't talk about that. <laughs> we'll get banned. Um, okay. Um, yeah, do you have any? Uh, yeah, we, we turned up at one place we didn't have any speaker cables. Um, we turned up at another it wasn't, place. It wasn't our fault that we didn't have any speaker cables. The PA there didn't have any speaker cables. Yeah, probably. we turned up at another place and their PA kept on overheating. So uh, the three bands before us had PA, but unfortunately we didn't. Um, it's just things like that, really. Uh, we joint joint booked our last tour, so we booked two days. The other band booked two days, mm. um, and they uh, their van broke down on the first day. So we've we've had to overcome that. By spending do, doing an extra day's work in half a day, basically, uh, to make sure that we got on on to all the places and all that kind of stuff. But was that that wasn't on the way to? Um... That was Bristol to Loughborough. Oh right, so it was on the way to Loughborough. So it wasn't like there was a big driver or anything. Yeah. Um, oh. So that was um, that was quite an interesting one. But I think any problem that we've had, we've overcome quite well. Yeah, it's been positive. You know, got a strong strong group of members. Strong members. Right, so question 11. How many gigs have you played this year? So I counted, and it's 15 so far. Played 15 gigs. Yeah, and we've got a few lined up. We've got like a little run of five dates uh-huh. uh, in October. Another one at the end of October or November, beginning of November, I think, and another one March, uh, December. Yeah, there's a, couple, there's a couple coming up. So, yeah. All right, question 12, but actually question 13. Uh, do you face any particular challenges this year? What is your plan after these upcoming few dates? Um, we've got five songs written. We might record those. Uh, we need to have a meeting, you know, band meeting, discuss what we're doing with our next year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've already covered the fact that going to Europe would be awesome. So mm -hmm. maybe we go to Europe. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's about it, really. Make our plan is to make some plans. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, definitely. Plan is to make some plans. 
Question 13. Would you consider moving away from your current genre and adding some more rockish or even post-metal elements to your music? Adam, how do you feel about that? By post-metal, if you mean synthesizers and <laughs> yeah and stuff like that then that's not our thing i think we like you see, get post metal that doesn't have synthesizers yeah you know, like isis and like yeah stuff yeah like that, you know yeah definitely but i think our, our main thing is to get out there and be pretty raw um i think i i quite like our kind of i guess we would probably tag along with the kind of post hardcore hardcore genre um uh, i think that appeals to me because it's so brutal. It's just raw. It's not like overproduced. It's not over thought of. You know, it's, it almost seems like they're jamming a lot of the time, and they've just recorded the jam because uh, they'll flitter between time signatures and stuff like that. I think that that really kind of appeals to me. I don't think I'd want more rockish tones necessarily. Um, it's already pretty rocky though. Like I know it's kind of fast and stuff, but there's yeah. like you know, there's riffs. And yeah, stuff. there's big riffy bits in there, which I would think is definitely one of our trademarks so we don't want to get rid of that at all um if anything i'd say kind of a bit groovier maybe a bit more punky maybe um probably not so much post metal or i don't know i do love all that shit though to be fair yeah but i don't really see us going in that direction yeah yeah but uh yeah i don't know i think the whole kind of point about like if you listen to the album like uh, it's really kind of just raw and like it kind of it sounds produced but it doesn't sound like polished at mm. all like it doesn't have all that kind of you know sample bass drum and whatever and that kind of stuff it sounds like a bunch of people playing in a room and you know I think that's what it should sound like really mm. well that was what we did so it'd be yeah. good to get the essence of what we did so if anything we'd like to do the same again but in a very natural organic way mm. no not the same again that's wrong I shouldn't have said that we, we want to you know do do whatever the fuck it is that we want to do, basically. You mm. know, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Keep on keeping on. Right, my right. question. Is it your question? My question. Uh, we're on 14. Honestly, what on earth is going on with these dogs? So, right, if people... Well, if, unless you've been on our Facebook, you won't know what the thing about the dogs is. <laughs> I put some pictures up of some dogs. Uh... Because <laughs> I didn't have any time, so I didn't do a tour poster, which I might do, probably won't do. Uh, but um, so you know, people will like pictures of nice animals. Uh, so if you put, you know, I was putting up a post about tour, so I thought I'd put a picture of a dog driving a car. Uh, so that's what's up about the dogs. And also, the interesting thing is, people seem to respond to that a lot more than posts about music. So maybe dogs are better than our music. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. People, people like them more. Yeah. <laughs> right. So this is the the final the final one. So, um, is there anything else you would like to add? Is there anything else you'd like to add, Adam? Hmm. I think we've waffled on quite a lot, to be honest. I think we've talked far too much already yeah, yeah i think we've probably covered most of the things that... just listen to the album please do if you got it any took more... a year yeah <laughs> yeah if we've put a lot of hard work into the album you can stream it on Bandcamp. you don't even have to download it yeah just um... listen to it <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having us idiotech adam had one more thing that he wanted to say to you if you want to contact us we're contactable through Facebook, if you type in versus versus V R S U S space U R S U S, then you can send us a message on there, or we have a hotmail which is versus versus at hotmail.co.uk. I think it might be live.co.uk, but yeah, something. Oh, like it's that. live.co.uk. I think that's probably on the Facebook anyway. So uh, if you want to message us, message us anytime. We're very very lovely chaps. We're amenable. Yep. You and know, we're polite. We're punctual. Yeah. But more than that, we're cool. Listen to the album. Yep. Bye. Bye.